Hello. Uh, I think you can hear me, right? So uh, today I will be talking about uh, the container security. Uh, you know, the containers are actually the new errors of executing applications, but there are some complications. And uh, actually, it's not a complication, but it's a new way of executing applications. So it's different from uh, the way that we are used to execute binaries or execute ex applications or server, whatever. So based on that uh, difference, we need to actually uh, change the way how we secure it. So we need to know a little bit about it. So after that, we need to know how we secure it. So today I will be showing and uh, describing some different uh, things that we can do with, with that. Anyway, so uh, the container security. First of all, so what is container? What is a container? So for, we need to know what we secure, right? So at least we need to a little bit uh, know about the containers. So probably most of you know, know but I will be giving some very uh, simple explanations of the containers. So the next, uh, do, do we really need to secure the containers? And how to be secure it? And how to find the vulnerabilities on the containers itself? So, the containers is actually, uh, I will not go with the official explanation uh, with in the Docker.com, but uh, actually uh, is a lightweight standalone uh, executable package of, of applications. So basically, uh, you confine some applications in a simple uh, file so you can uh, run instance from this. You know, basic operating systems when you go, I'm a, you know, I'm, I am a Unix guy, uh, but when you execute a top command, you will see lots of executables. Uh, and when you go to the windows, you run the, 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 the task, uh, you know, you, you want to see the task that is being run right now, you will see a lot of executables. But the containers are different. So you, uh, you create an image and you put only one or anyway, a few executables. So you basically create a, environment to run uh, that application, whatever it is. So you are uh, basically creating microservices based on the security. So uh, the, second, the first one is the official explanation that can be found in that link, but the second one is what I found in, you know, when I try to understand that concept. So uh, the container is actually, uh, it is what is, it is uh, for, let's say that for the virtualization, uh, we virtualize the operating systems. That is what virtualization is for. But for when we say about uh, the containerization, we con uh, virtualize the applications. We confine the applications in simple uh, zip files or compressed files so it can be run in a confined environment. Basically, it is more secure. But the way right now we execute it, you know, creates, can create some complications based on that. Because in containers, we always do root users I mean, the uh, privileged user to run the applications that we think that uh, no, not, nothing going to happen. You know, basically, when the web developments uh, emerged uh, with the with the new web technologies, we thought that hey, my uh, my uh, my database is secure. My you know, no one will see it. But after the evolution of you know the web application security standards like XSS, you know, SQL injection, things like that, we understood that. Uh, uh, our application is not secure. You know, it will be a process that people understand the way the, to secure the containers. So we need to prepare ourselves. So if you want to know more about the container, what is it, how to use it, uh, you know, the, basically the Docker uh, uses, the Docker is the leading, actually there are more container technologies, but the Docker is the leading containerization technology. So you can use, read this book, uh, an O'Reilly book, uh, for the containers. So, uh, actually, when you say con Docker or container, it says resource isolations and utilize the features of Linux kernel and the C groups that is, you know, uh, confining some uh, executables and namespace and especially the union layer file system. So basically, whenever you execute a file, uh, execute a command, uh, you create a layer and layer and layer. So it is different from the way that we understand the, understand the operating systems. Uh, 
So, uh, when we compare the virtualization with the, t no, with the containers, it's actually in the virtualization, we virtualize the operating system, you know, on the top of the uh, hypervisor. But with the container, we don't care about the operating system because we virtualize the software. You know, in the VMware or other uh, virtualization technologies, you multiply the virtualized uh, operating systems, but uh, uh, you know, most of them use the same uh, executables, like the Windows kernel, like the you know, drivers, like you know, the services, things like that. Most of them are actually using the same amount of memory. So the container is something else that we actually do not con uh, virtualize the operating system files, but we actually virtualize the applications. So it will you know, use less RAM memory, uh, and it will be more secure, because you know, the container cannot get off to, and the, the operating system will not be hacked by that. At least right now we think about it, but you know, even with the virtualization, we think that the hypervisor is not reachable, but there, are, uh, there have been some vulnerabilities to actually get the, uh, the information from the hypervisor itself, and also the worst, then you can get information from uh, other uh, virtual machines with the new vulnerabilities like you know, Meltdown, Spectre, or other vulnerabilities. So same will happen for the containers, sooner or later. So if we combine the uh, containers with virtualization, again, this image is taken from the Docker.com, uh, on the page that what is Docker, or the, the leadership container uh, technology. So we can use the hypervisor technology and use also, uh, we can create virtual machines and we can use, create uh, uh, Docker images inside virtual machines. So it's easier to implement, easier to manage, things like that. And in today's environment, uh, that is how we use the Docker, actually. No, we don't. Uh, some big organization can use the, the direct the bare uh, metal operating system, but it is easier to use the containers in a virtual environment uh, for its sake. Anyway, so container uh, penetration in our, in, our, uh, in, our, in technology. So the containerization is everywhere. So, uh, in years by later, you know, you will see that most of the things will run in the containers, not like the in standard operating system. So, we need to know it. So, it's a new era for application development. Application developers is, you know, they, they love it. So, the system administrator or so-called DevOps administrator will, will love, they need to use it. And we cannot live without it. So, we need to way to First, uh, harden the components, just like standard operating systems. At least make, the, uh, make that system or whatever, the operating system, more difficult to hack, uh, even if there's a vulnerabilities. So the hardening is thing is very important. So there are some standards I will be talking later. So, and even we harden the operating system, the or binary itself that is executed, can, can, or the operating itself it can contain some vulnerabilities. So we need to be aware what kind of vulnerabilities in, in the containers, the instance. So the, the containers really need security. So uh, you may think that, you know, it runs on a small uh, image, a very con uh, confined image, that one executable, let's say that if you run uh, an Nginx server, uh, it, you know, with some additional binaries to start the service, the Nginx server, or whatever you are interested in, it's running in a small environment. But again, it reaches out somewhere, it connects to, to your backend database, things like that. So if it's been hacked, uh, probably they can, you know, with the you know, previous slides. So the hacker will, uh, uh, the lateral movement was talked to, you know, mentioned to you. So the hacker will try to enter to your application, then will try to penetrate to other side, other instances in your environment with the lateral movement in the way that the hackers move. Anyway, so we need to, we, and there will always be uh, vulnerabilities for the containers, always, because uh, as we have seen the technology, how it moves, 100% uh, sure that near soon that someone will find actually the vulnerability for the image or vulnerability for the container, uh, Docker itself. So. We need to manage those environments. We need to know what kinds of patches should be applied. We need to know what's, what is in our environments. So, in the containers, actually, you will be responsible, not the operating system vendor, because you will be not using the operating system's 
uh, renders uh, packages like you know RPM file in containers. Uh, you need to put your own uh, uh, binaries, like compiling from source. So I don't know uh, if you have managed an environment like that. You know, uh, there was an operating system, Linux operating system called Gen2. So you are basically compiling everything from scratch. It's uh, something like that. So you need to, uh, you cannot trust on the operating system vendor because operating system vendors, even the container one, will provide the basic ones. So you, you are putting your own binaries. You are compiling the Nginx or the whatever web server it is. Uh, I mean, you, you, you get it, but it's being compiled or you compile your own binaries. So you need to way, find a way to secure them because you're responsible. So it's a great thing, but it will uh, bring you some responsibilities for that. So you need to harden and audit and patch your containers and also the host platforms for uh, misconfigurations and vulnerabilities. So how we do that? So what kind of things we can uh, apply on the containers? So a simple roadmap that I've, uh, I've told about how to, how to help uh, to, to the people that uh, secure the containers. That first, you need to harden your hosts that the containers, the Docker will run. So what you need to do on that? And after the, the securing or hardening the container, of course you need to patch the, you know, the patching is something else, yeah, so, but you need to harden and patch. It, can, it should be both ways. And after that, you need to uh, secure, harden your container images, and you need to uh, be able to audit, uh, the, assess the vulnerabilities that is in the uh, container instance, not only images. So uh, when I say container images, let's say that uh, for, the go uh, for the guys that knows the vulnerability, I mean, sorry, virtualization technology, you create a golden machine and you clone it. So the, the basic idea for the containers, uh, the terminology for images is being used to like, like a golden image. So you create instance based on these images. So you need to look both ways, not only one. So to harden your container hosts, there are actually, uh, there are very good uh, sites for hardening uh, guidelines for uh, the, the site called uh, CIS Security. I was uh, a security audit before, so I uh, auditor before I was using the guidelines for the CIS. So uh, there are lots of lots of uh, way, uh, guidelines for you to secure, like CentOS, like you know Red Hat, like Windows, or Cisco, whatever you have. So uh, they, right now there are some guidelines or hardening guides uh, to secure the. Uh, Docker images, Docker uh, technologies. So uh, they call it benchmarks, by the way. So for for the Docker's, and again, uh, I strongly recommend you if you are into security, I strongly recommend to enroll and subscribe on that project. So you will see a lot of hardening guides. Basically, you are with the hardening, you are making the hackers. Mm, you're creating a challenge for the hackers, you know. Even with the configuration, you can actually block or, you know, uh, a vulnerability or an exploit with the configuration file not, not fixing the vulnerability itself. So there are, uh, when you go there and you will find some different benchmarks, guidelines, uh, that will tell you how to secure Docker images. So those are the versions for the Docker itself. So if you are using 1.6, there's another uh, guideline. If you are using uh, 1.13, there's another guideline. Uh, things like that. There are actually one, two, three, four, five. Anyway, five different versions. Uh, there are the guidelines for far different versions of the Docker. But they're mostly the same. But uh, you know, the new versions bringing some new technologies. So you need to audit or secure or change some configuration file. Uh, so they add some new instances. So you can actually, it's you know, you know, a community-based project that you can enroll, and you can uh, give uh, some suggestions. You know, let's say, I, let's, I think that, that uh, changing that parameter from, let's say, the one to the rear zero will actually give more secure environment for Docker. And it will be discussed, and it will be in the next versions. So I strongly, as a security aware people, strongly uh, see what's going on in that pro uh, project. <laughs> so uh, to harden your images, uh, we and at least start with using the default. I mean the the official images from the Docker. 
So you pull some, you download some images because you need to base, you know, you, you don't do everything from scratch with the Docker. You basically uh, base your environment from an, an operating system, or from, not operating system, but operating system images of Docker images. So uh, in the Docker file, that's a configuration file, you say, hey, I'm basing my uh, new Docker images on CentOS. You basically say from, and you give the uh, Docker image of CentOS or Ubuntu or whatever it is. And they are small, and they already provided by the operating system vendors. So when you use it, always use the you know, official ones, uh, so you don't get surprises. And uh, you can add your uh, script, the hardening script that is in, provided in CIS security uh, guidelines. You can uh, you know, the, uh, copy some uh, commands and put it to your own script. And as a last step, you can, in the Docker file, that, that, again, the Docker file is a file that creates Docker images. Uh, so you can create Im Docker images from, a, with a, let's say that's a source code of uh, how you create Docker images and, and the instance of that. So you, say at the, you, you can say as a last step, hey, harden CS, run uh, harden CS benchmark CentOS 7 SH. You know? It's a shell script. So it will secure harden your, not your host operating system that will run Docker images, but also your Docker images. Uh, your, so you need to tweak some files in the Docker image itself and things like that. So, but the tweaking is no, it's not enough. To be, you know, hardening the Im image itself is not enough uh, because there will be always some uh, exploits or the vulnerabilities that you cannot fix or overcome by only uh, securing or changing some configuration files. So you make sure, you have to make sure that you run the latest versions of uh, the Docker images that is containing latest uh, packages in that image. So, uh, of course, and uh, you know, you need to audit, you know, in your, the, your container environments. So, so far, what I have told you that is that first, secure the container host, then secure, uh, I mean, harden your uh, container host, like, you know, what kind of patch should be applied, what kind of hard uh, tweaking uh, the configuration file should be applied on the host, and then what we have told that we need to uh, secure the image itself. And then, as a last step, we need to assess or audit our uh, images and instance as well. So, and yes, so I don't know, let me see. Yeah, I have time, a little bit. So with Rapid7 software, actually, you can do uh, all of them. You know, you can uh, check for the vulnerabilities for the operating systems, the host, Docker host, you can harden uh, or check, assess your images. You can uh, find the patch levels. So if there's a patch or a vulnerability in the Docker image or the operating system, the host, you can do both. And uh, we have a product for that uh, called uh, Rapid7 Inside VM. Uh, again, uh, this one will help you to uh, check the hardening steps, you know, it will check some configuration files with our policies and also uh, find the vulnerabilities on the versions that you have already installed in the whole operating system and also Docker image. Uh, and also, we, you can, you know, the, that part is only not enough because the security is composed of, you know, the operating system, image, Docker image, whatever, and also the application. So the application should be secure too. So you need to secure your web applications. I mean, I say application, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say the web application. Uh, so you need to secure the uh, web applications. So again, for that, we have another software called Inside AppSec or AppSpider that actually it's a you know, web application like OWASP tools. We are implementing the best practices of the OWASP top 10. And of course, we have about 90, 94 different attack vectors that we are applied against your applications. So again, uh, we are, that, pro, that tool can help you. So uh, the tools, actually, the software we, uh, that Rapid7 has uh, is that, like that's containing that, like, that dashboard uh, that we call it Inside, dash, inside VM Dashboard, or uh, it's been called Live Dashboard. 
uh, and you actually have a special dashboard for the containers itself. So with that container, you will see in your environment what kind of host you have, what kind of has assets containing the, uh, the, the containers, what kind of images we have, and what kind of vulnerabilities each images have. And also, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a live dashboard, meaning that with every scan, it's automatically updated, uh, so you can utilize it. So it's, and it's also, uh, you can add a, a dashboard, it's composed of some cards, you know, you can add or remove some nice uh, images, I would say, uh, we call it cards, so you can add uh, or remove uh, additional cards uh, to create your own dashboard or tweak it for it, your own needs. So, on the, uh, and actually, if the dashboard is not enough and you, you, uh, if you want to drill down something else, we have, pro we are pro uh, no, the Rapid7 provides you some special uh, SQL-like query to query your own uh, Docker or container uh, environment. Like, like you can say, uh, assets contains containers, or assets uh, con containing uh, containers that is already started. Things like that. You know, there are lots of uh, SQL -like queries that you can use. Uh, th those are the most common ones for the containers, and uh, with that you can drill down uh, whatever you want in this uh, in this software. And also, uh, as you can see, uh, you will see, uh, you know, the containers are different from the basic operating system. Containers are based on layers. So every command uh, that is being executed while creating your Docker image is actually uh, creating a layer. So let's say that you have uh, installed in your, uh, in your Docker file, you said, hey, install Nginx. Okay, another layer. And uh, while there, let's update the operating system, like uh, you know, yum uh, minus y up, up, upgrade. Another layer. So you add uh, you, uh, you add a user. Another layer. All of them is a layer. So the Docker is based on the layered operating system, as I would say, uh, the image. So we need to, you know, we can see the layers that the, the each layer can have different vulnerabilities. So the idea is to have no vulnerability in my latest layer, so it's uh, up to date. Uh, you know, like, like uh, it, uh, it's, it's containing the latest uh, uh, patch of the operating system of that uh, container image. And uh, the most important thing is that we, you know, the Rapid7 integrates itself with uh, different uh, images, image repositories the most trust, trusted ones. So we are, uh, the Rapid7 constantly evaluates those images to give you the vulnerability that they have. So we are, uh, it can connect to different, uh, like, you know, Docker Hub uh, or Store with its new name, uh, Docker Store. Uh, we can uh, connect to Amazon, we, uh, it can connect to other things. So with that, we will see the environment, what kind of vulnerabilities you have. So you can, uh, you know, as you can see, even if you have your own Docker repository, you can connect. And you can send uh, those images to be reassessed. And of course, as a last step, as I told you, then you need to not only secure or harden or patch or assess the operating system, host, Docker image, but also the application itself. So the inside uh, AppSec, tool is a web application scanning tool that is containing a lot of uh, different uh, vulnerability vectors or attack vectors like XSS, uh, stored procedures, uh, SQL injections, whatever. So you can find the vulnerabilities or try to find the vulnerabilities in your application code, not only the uh, other things. Okay, so uh, I don't know how many minutes I have. Okay. So basically, uh, it will, I will get two more minutes to show you the software. You know, they, basically, they are the screenshots that I already shown you to you. So I have an environment here that's called Inside VM, the, our vulnerability, man, uh, the Rapid7 vulnerability management solution uh, that will ha show you the vulnerabilities for hosts, I mean, operating systems, and Docker images. 
things like that. So, so in my environment, I have a site called SecOps Europe, and I have only one asset. So this asset is actually uh, here. It's called, no, it's an IP address and a host name. Uh, and this operating system has that kind of vulnerabilities, so 48. And uh, there are four Metasploit, explo uh, Metasploit modules that you can use to exploit those vulnerabilities. And uh, yes, and when I click on that uh, asset or host, there's a special tab, uh, aside from the other vulnerabilities that the operating system have. Uh, there's a special tab for, for containers, as you can see, the containers that are running on that. And also, uh, I told you about CI security, there's a special tab for the policies. So basically, you are assessing your operating system, host operating system, the Docker operating system, uh, based on some standards like CS ones that I mentioned to you. So how compliant you are. So when you click on that, so you will see on which uh, bulletins, which matters are you failing. So let me click on that. And uh, actually, yeah. So restrict network traffic between containers. Those are actually uh, the matters, but the bulletins that is found in sales security. So sales security's Docker, uh, sales security's Docker uh, benchmark is actually composed of some uh, ha security hardening guides, and we get it, and uh, we can assess your operating system based on that, the host operating system. And after that, uh, I can I will show you the dashboard for the containers itself. So. I will show you our container dashboard that is, you know, containing one asset with deployed containers, that one operating system, and it, uh, right now it contains one uh, image. Yeah, this is the image. So when I cl click on that image, I see some layers. So the, as you can see, on the last layer, we don't have any vulnerability, but on the previous layers, you know, we have some vulnerabilities. Actually, since the Docker is uh, a layered uh, uh, image, or let, let's say operating system or whatever, uh, we care about the latest image, latest uh, layer. But it would be nice to see the, the vulnerabilities for previous layers, for previous versions. So when I click on that, actually I will see the packages on that image, on the, that layer, not on an image, but on that layer. I will see the, uh, all layers here, on that, uh, this one, this image, I will see the vulnerabilities. I will see the history of that Docker image. So that when I say history, I'm talking about the layers. Uh, you know, each uh, executed commands. Let's say that the end, this is nginx, uh, basically a web server uh, the image, Docker image. Then the Docker is updating the owner of that images, probably the nginx uh, software group, is updating those images or adding some new versions of the Nginx and also updating the, the base operating system on that image. As you can see, we provide all, everything to you. Yeah. So that is what I want to show you. So if you have any questions, okay. Right now, none. Anyway, uh, I think I'm done with my minutes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your listening.